saw I had a lot of work to do, and we're going to do that to be sure. But have you ever had a golf club explained? Welcome back to the Golf Shop, Jim McCleary, Most War Certified Club Maker, Club Fitter, where we talk about club repairs, club reviews, and club fittings. If you would, like, subscribe, swing, and hit that bell, and that way you get more of these videos when they drop. Since we did a, we just finished the Strixon Cleveland series, and you can look some of it up here, I decided it, it's turned to 20 degrees and I'm still building clubs which is great and they're going all over the place however it dawned on me doing some searching that there really wasn't a lot of well basics right basics on on what a golf club is right just the very basics now who could this be for well it could be for just about anybody to be sure but I get a lot of questions from moms and dads uh, beginner golfers and even sometimes I get some questions from guys that have been golfing for a while just on, you know, certain terminologies and what they mean. So we're going to start this off. This is going to be a crawl, walk, run concept, all right? This one's going to be about the basics of a golf club. What do these pieces mean? How do they go into a bag? That kind of stuff. I mean basic, right? And this is to get, the, that's to get you guys who are just thinking about getting started into golf what things you might need to know, that kind of stuff. And then we'll get in, gradually we'll add to it. And then we'll get up into the next level. All right, so this, uh, so it's gonna be, uh, you know, real quick and dirty because, you know, we're not gonna bore you for very long and that's about it. So how do we start? Well, everybody seems to be looking at, you know, they describe a golf club by its head, right? They describe a golf club by its head. So what, how do you do that? Well. In reality, there's basically, there's two kinds. There are blades, really old ones, and then there are cavity backs. Cavity backs. Now, what's a blade and what's a cavity back? Well, a cavity back is exactly that. It is a, it is a club that's got a cavity in it, and it goes in. The technical term is perimeter weighted, right? And it's just as it says, perimeter weighted. So what's happened is they've taken the weight from that's all in the middle here and they've removed it and they've put it all the way on the outside so you have two you have two different styles muscle backs or blades perimeter weighted or cavities now there the next step will be well what kinds of cavities and what does all that stuff do this is basic remember all right so now what how do you know which to choose well they have different letters and numbers on them so there are two, there's also two different kinds of processes in which a golf club is made. One is called forging and the other one's called casting. Those are the basic models. Technically casting is called the lost wax process or investment casting is the more or less lost wax process. And then forging has multiple versions of itself. If you think of it as an industrial strength Play-Doh mold where you take a a nice hot piece of metal and you put it into a press and you get the shape that you want where investment casting is just that this guy and you get a shape you mill out a shape that you want and you pour the liquid metal in it and you let it you know cool down and when you're done you have a shape those are the two kinds okay so now you have those two kinds what do you do after that well once you get your clubs that you've chosen in the bag now they all have different designators on them. You, know, you have some that say, will say four, and some that will say like a, have a letter, like a P. And the P is pitching wedge. So let's get this one straight. As the letter, or as the number is smaller, the, the ball will go further. So like a four iron will hit further than an eight iron. That's how that works. Then you get into the, down the lower end, you get into the wedges and they turn into letters. P, A, G, S, L. Pitch, gap, attack, uh, sand, and lob, all right? Those are the ones that, that's how you would designate it. And as it goes down that lettering, those are the ones that you get. I do get a lot of questions on, oh, so the sand wedge is my 50 degree. No, your pitching wedge is typically now 
uh, well, even not anymore, was in the 52-54 mark. And now most pitching wedges are around 46, right? So they've gone up quite a bit in their, they've gotten stronger in their loft. So pitching wedge would be first, attack or gap wedge, depending on the manufacturer. And now in some cases you have both, all right? And you got to be very careful about that look in the specs. And then the sand wedge. And the sand wedge really hasn't moved in the entire time it's been around at 56 degrees, plus or minus a degree. Lob wedge being last, which is 60 degrees. 56, 60 degrees, and then there's actually now they're making 64 degree wedges. So you, you just got to know that when you're going in. Now this is just the iron side of it. Woods are basically the same way. When you have a driver, that's one. Three wood is second, five wood is next, seven wood, nine wood, and so on and so forth. And that's a, and the same thing with hybrids. They follow along with the irons. So how do they go in the bag? Well, we'll check that out. That's just my placement inside of a bag. You can do it, You can, however it is that you, makes you feel. There's no, you have to have it this way. It's a, you're breaking a rule that just doesn't exist because there are bags that have four holders, six holders, eight holders, 14 holders. It just depends on the type of bag you have as to how they go in and how you like it. But that's how I put mine in. Now you will have categories of those types of irons. You'll hear stuff like, players irons or the better players irons or distance players irons or game improvement or super game improvement that type of stuff and they do have those categories you know and basically what they're saying is if you start with the the player club is typically your blade or your player's cavity meaning those are for the guys that have been playing score pretty low hit the ball in the center quite regularly and you know basically good players then you got players distance irons. And players distance irons are a, a thing that's just kind of popped up as of late, but let's say you were a good player or you are a good player, but your swing speed has just gone down and you're looking for that extra distance to get back into where you were or to you know just try and you know beat your buddies. Get that hot dog and a coke at the end of the round when you're betting. And that's what you're looking for. And those are the same they're the same types of clubs, but the lofts are stronger. All right, and those are out there. Those have become very, very popular as of late. And then you'll have stuff like super, or yeah, game improvement, super game improvement. Those are the guys that, you know, the game improvement are the guys that, let's just say, they're in that 90s category. And you have super game improvement and ultra game improvement. And basically what those end up being is very large, very large clubs with all kinds of stuff that's, built into the design to help them be more forgiving for a beginning golfer. Now, what we're going to start off with, the best answer in golf when we're talking about golf clubs is it depends. It depends. Because there are going to be some people that start off with that have just this incredible athletic talent, okay? Athle and they just can pick up a stick and hit a ball and they're just naturally gifted albeit that's not very many but that does happen then you're going to get just the opposite in the spectrum guys that have all the desire in the world but maybe not have all that athletic ability and need to work a little harder to get where they need to be and you know a a basic let's say evaluation of the skills a a mini fitting might be required when you first get started just to get you over the hump okay now, if you're getting started and you have no idea and you're just a middle-of-the-road guy, you know, as much as I'd like to tell you, this, you know, you need this particular set. What I recommend to people is going and getting what's called golf in a box, all right? Now, I know a lot of the custom guys are cringing right now, but we're just talking about, you know, your guy or gal trying to figure out whether or not you're going to like golf, right? And whether or not you're going to like golf. And you can go to these bigger stores, and every OEM's got them. There, it's a bag, a set of clubs, and all in a box, right? And it's everything you need to get started, except for golf balls and tees. 
and you just pull it out of the box, you take the plastic off, and you're golfing. Now, the downturn, you know, and the reason why I say this is a lot of times the kits are, are definitely less expensive than if you went and got a, a, a full-on set of what would be the stuff you see on TV. All right, and again, the idea here is, are we trying to figure out whether we like golf, right? So if you do, if you like it, then you can hand the set down, put in a garage sale, and you really don't have a whole lot invested into it before moving up to the next set. And the same thing for if you don't like it. If you don't like it, you still put in a garage sale, you put a little something back, sell it on eBay, whatever, right? And that way you don't have it. Now, again, there's a turning point. You just don't, you get the cheapest set. You, you get exactly what you pay for in this arena. You pay two to $300 for a set of clubs, you're gonna get junk. All right, but you get up in that $700 range, and then you're going to start getting stuff that might be three, four, five years older models, but they're still quality gear, and that's kind of where you're at. All right, just depends on your investment and what you want to do. But that's golf in a box and how to get started. Next is when you take the head, you take the head and you want to put it in a shaft. Okay, what kinds of shafts are there? Well, right now there's basically two kinds of shafts. There's graphite and there's steel. Graphite being on the top, steel being on the bottom. All right. Graphite is typically a lighter shaft. It, you know, a lot of people will correlate graphite to more flexible, and that is totally not the case. Totally not the case. All right. You can get. I can, There is so much more flexibility in graphite as far as weights profiles, that kind of thing, that's going into the next video, that it, you, it's just 10 times more flexible. However, this is, been, is, is widely more accepted. Now in the past, shafts used to be made of wood. All right, they used to be made of wood. And you had, you, each manufacturer was dependent on the tree supply around them, lion heart, ash, that kind of stuff. Until U.S. came up with hickory, hickory ended up being the best thing. Now it's steel and graphite, so you have the choice. Steel is typically what you're going to find in a golf in a box with some. And well, what you're normally going to find is irons are going to have steel. Woods and hybrids will typically have graphite. All right. That now again, that's what we talked about: lighter, shock absorbing, steel consistent, and less expensive. Okay, it's hands-on time. Again, when you get it, when we get into more advanced stuff, we'll talk about which kind fit what types of golfers, but that's later. All right, last but not least, the grip is the connection to the golf club. All right, is the connection to the golf club. And the grip, again, used to be a, you know, they would take like lamb's wool and or leave it naked and then just wrap a leather strap around it so that there would be some gripping mechanism on the shaft. Okay. Well, now they've run it into injected rubber. Okay. Injected rubber was the most common kind, and you see it in the day. It used to be the what they called the victory grip, and it had a big arrow on it right here, and it was green, and everybody loved it. And it was replaced by the tour velvet and the in the tour wrap. Now, that's just preference. So what do you need to know about grips? All right, well, there's rubber grips, which is this part of it, all right? Then there are corded grips, which is this part of it. And you see all the, and the reason why it's corded is because there's cords running in there. Again, not rocket science, otherwise I'm not doing it. And this is what you would call in the new style half cord. In the day, half cords used to mean that the bottom end was corded and the top end was rubber. But now it's like this. You can have whole rubber grips, you can have whole corded grips. You have rubber grips that have very tactile, very sticky type of grip. You can have some that are get, get traction just based on the pattern. Okay. There's and there's multiple companies out there that will serve the purpose of what you need. Now for those guys who don't like a lot of sting, there's what's called a synthetic grip. And basically it's a softer grip. Okay, it's a, and for those guys that like that softer feel, and that's what that's for. Okay, now the plus, the pros and the cons. The softer grips will tend to wear out more because there's a little bit more movement in the grip. The ones that are firmer have more stuff in it, 
tend to last longer because, well, it's firmer and there's more stuff in it. And that's the reason why you got, so when you go there, when you get, when you get golf in a box, it's purely going to be rubber grip. But if you have something made, you should be fit to it and they're going to find your hand size and you're going to get the choice of, you know, the feel, the, you know, the wear, the make, the, all that kind of stuff. So they, so you, you've got your woods, hybrids, irons, wedges, and last but not least is a putter. Okay, the putter is what you use on the green. And the putter, the putter can come in just every shape and size just like a, just like an iron, right? And they start again, they started off and it looked a lot like that. Right on a wood. That was a that was a putter. Now the most popular putter on the planet is the Anzer style. the The Anzer style comes from the Ping Golf Company, which started the Anzer. That was where it came from. And every company makes one that's like it. And it's the original bladed looking club with a little bit of offset on it. And there, are, there, which would be in the category again of blades, a bladed putter, multiple kinds of that. And now mallets. Mallets are a little larger. And they'll give you easy sight line. Their resistance to twisting is really good when you putt. However, sometimes they get a little gaudy and they get distracting, and people, that's the reason why people like blades. So, again, you just gotta, these are all choices that fit you, right? There's no one, there's just no one club that ever fits anybody, all right? And that's the, that's the beauty of customization. When you get to that level, or if you, you know, I'm not telling you you don't have to, you can start out getting customized and you can do whatever you want with it. I'm just telling you, these are the basics of golf clubs, right? So we have the grip, we have the shaft, we have the head, kinds of each kind, why they're there, and how they go in the back. And that's it, all right? This is just basic. Now we do the next one, we're going to go into what, a little more specifics in each one. So stay tuned. Hope you like this series. If you got any questions about golf clubs and their, you know, what they're for and how they work, put them in the show notes and we'll certainly put them in the next couple of series. And as always, let's see your scores go low.